happen regarding credit. And it's very, very important because we conduct workshops or we attend college age children um, classrooms and provide workshops. And a, I would say a large number of young adults in their between the ages of 17 to 21 who are already employed and have a paycheck and are able to start working on their credit have no idea how to treat it. So thank you again for being here. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. So the solving the mystery of credit, and it has been a great mystery because we never know. There's always legends, and we'll talk about some of those legends today. But there, just to let you know, there's three major credit bureaus. So the reason why we should know this is because sometimes we have members who come in to Altura and say, I just went to Bank of America and my credit score at Bank of America was 780. And I come to Altura and my credit score says it's 620. Why is there such a difference? The reason being is because there's three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. All three might have different reporting history on it. So it is very, very important for you to be able to di distinguish what's on what credit. The only item that will be on all three credit bureaus is uh, your mortgage. So if you are a homeowner, your mortgage is going to be on Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. But say that you come to Altura and you want to buy a car. Well, we are only contracted with Experian. So that means that we're only going to report your payments to Experian. Say that you have a collection account with a medical agency and that collection account only shows on TransUnion. That means that that credit score is gonna be affected by it um, in a negative way, but that might be lower than your positive payments through experience and Altura. So we recommend always, always, at least once a year, and it's free for you to do this, to check all three credit reports. So you just go to ex experian.com, Equifax, transunion.com, and you can check what is on your credit. So for example, using the analogy of Altura Auto Loan, let's say that on experience report, you have a 780 FICO really high because you had an auto loan with Altura paid on time every time, and we report it to Experian. So you have a great score. But then you look at Equifax and your score is not so high. You find out that Altura Auto Loan is not reporting on Equifax. So you can actually go in yourself and add that account. Just have your account number, the name and address of that company and ask them to add it. You definitely want to do that. Why? Because that's going to increase all three scores. Uh, well, at least for that credit report, but you want to do it for all three and make sure everything's on there. Now, if you do have a collection account with Equifax, you don't want to add that to Experian or TransUnion, needless to say, but you want to make sure that you're updating your credit report with positive impact credit at all times. So credit information, we all know it is reported to our credit bureaus and not all collectors, as we talked about right now, report to all three credit bureaus. So keep that in mind. Uh, it is our responsibility to ensure that we are keeping track of our credit and that we are making sure that our credit is up to date. You may access your own file at any time. So say that I go and apply at Kohl's and Kohl's declines me for credit. I would recommend checking to see what's on there. A lot of times, I mean, fraud is a big thing now. We don't, um, we see that a lot with credit reports. And a lot that we do see with fraud is um, utility bills uh, that are not, that are under your name that are not yours, cell phones, gyms, memberships, because these are companies that really don't check identity. They're not face to face. So it's easy to commit fraud on these accounts. Um, it's not, there's nothing worse than having to buy a car this weekend. And the dealer tells you that you can't buy a car because your credit is score is not very good and that you have a few collections on there that are not yours. You can dispute inaccuracies at any time. So if I check my credit report and there is a fraudulent item on my credit report, or there's something that shouldn't have been reported late, and that's something that's common as well. So say that I have a credit card with uh, Wells Fargo and I've never been late, but it shows a 30 day late, I can dispute it there. They have 30 days to correct the item. So within 30 days, you will receive a letter, email, letting you know that it has been corrected if it's incorrect. 
especially fraud. Outdated information, if there's any outdated information, a lot of times when you finish paying off a loan or if it's anything that's it's just been over seven to 10 years, you wanna make sure that they remove it because a lot of times they don't. Or say that you finish paying off your auto loan. It could be that it still shows a last payment and it doesn't show late or anything, but it still shows that you still have this open trade line with Altura Credit Union, an auto loan, and you still owe the last payment of five hundred dollars. Not no, not late or anything, but it will, it can show. So just make sure that you're keeping track of that. Um, access to your file is limited, so when you do check it, they are going to verify that it's you. They're going to ask you a series of questions to make sure that it's you, so it's verified information. And there is information that might be limited due to fraud, or even if you put, placed a fraud alert on your credit. Okay. Through annual credit report request, we, sorry, request um, you get one free credit report a year. So. Even if you haven't checked your credit or you, you ran your credit in the beginning of January, you can go on today if you haven't yourself checked your credit on all three major credit report bureaus and check to see what your credit looks like. Um, it is completely free, they don't charge you. And then you also get a free credit check if you want, if you are declined for any application. So if you are go to Kohl's, apply for a credit and you were declined, you can definitely check it for free. Outside of the one time a year and the declines, you would have to pay to check your credit. Um, so identification, what is reported? Identification, name, date of birth, social security address, public records, if you have any bankruptcies, judgments, or liens accounts, so payment history, balance, date open, and any inquiry. So if you're applying for credit, it's going to show all your inquiries. Now, keep in mind, if you're applying for credit and it's for a home mortgage, you can shop as many times as you want for a mortgage loan, as long as it's within 30 calendar days. So if I want to buy a house and I go with the first mortgage lender and I'm just not liking their fees, I'm not liking the interest, I'm not liking the service, not a problem. I can then go to um, any other. I can shop a thousand different if I wanted to within the 30 days. It's going to affect me as one inquiry. Say that I want to buy an auto loan and I'm at the dealer and I don't like their rates or their costs or their fees. Well, guess what? I can shop as many auto loans in 14 calendar days as I want. So, and this uh, is done because we don't want to have someone feel pressured into purchasing a home or an auto just with the first lender because they don't want their credit affected. Um, when I was younger, my first car, I went to the dealer and they said, okay, well, this is your third dealer because if inquiry will show, it just doesn't affect you. This is your third dealer, so you should just buy your car here because by the time you go to your fourth dealer, your interest rate's gonna be higher because your credit score is dropping. While that was not true, they lied to me and I ended up buying a, a metallic Ford Thunderbird that I didn't want because I thought I better do it now and I don't want my credit affected. That was a lie, you have up to 14 calendar days. So if on a weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you wanna go and shop, all the dealers on a block, you can definitely do that. It's not gonna affect you. Okay. Am I stuck here? Okay, here we go. So other information that shows on your credit report is our uh, credit name, partial account number. So a lot of times it's not full account number. Data account was opened. Payment history on time, delinquent late uh, delinquencies or charge offs, date of last activity, current balance, joint or individual account. If we have a co signer or we're the co signer on someone else's account. And just know um, a lot of people ask me or tell us when they come in, well, it's not my bill, it's not my responsibility. I was just a co signer. Just a co signer is not just a co signer. That means that if they can't find the primary, they're going to come after the co signer. So you're just as responsible on credit and financially for that uh, co signing that you did. So please keep that in mind when you want to co sign for someone. If it's a joint or individual account, the current status, if it's past due or it's paid on time, and the credit limit. 
So on revolving, revolving credit, such as credit cards, home equity lines of credit, store cards, gas cards, those are all gonna be having a credit, credit limit on them. Okay, so our FICO scores range from 300 to 850. I've never seen a 300 FICO score that's fairly, fairly low. Um, average, what's considered bad credit, and people ask me this all the time, is anything below you know, the 300, 300, but averagely we see about 400, which is pretty challenging credit. Um, good credit is considered at about 750, 720. That's good credit. Anything above is going to be excellent credit. Um, average credit or just good enough to get you a loan is about 620. So uh, just keep those numbers in mind. What affects our credit and what makes up our score is something that we're always asked as well. So the biggest one, as you can see here on our graph, 35% in the blue, that's payment history. So what is our payment history? Do we make payments on time? Are we delinquent? Um, do we have any collection accounts or judgments on our credit report? Or do we have no payment history? That's going to affect us as well. That means we have no credit established. So that's the biggest portion of what makes our credit score. 30% is amounts owed. And what this means is on our, on our um, revolving credit. So again, our store credit cards, our gas cards, our home equity lines of credit, anything that's revolving, anything that you don't have to reapply to continue to use is gonna be revolving. So this is a big portion. A lot of people don't know this, but they come to us and they say, I don't understand. I don't have, I have one credit card. I um, don't have any debt and my score is so low. While that one credit card, let's use for example, they give you a limit of $1,000 to use on that one credit card. If you're running it over 50%, and I just use 50% really on your handout that you're gonna receive uh, via email, really it says 65%, but even though I work at a financial institution, my math is not always so good. So I, so I choose to think 50% and it helps me anyways. So if I have a credit card of $1,000 limit, maximum limit I can use, and I'm running it every month at 900, 800, that's 90%, 80%, 70% at 700, my score is gonna take a huge dive. Why? Because I'm using higher than the 50% for my revolving credit. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, wait a minute, so they're letting me use $1,000 in limit, but if I use it, I'm gonna get penalized on my credit? And the answer is yes. So if you need to look at your credit report, if you're running your revolving credit cards or gas cards or lines of credit over 50%, either A, you can call uh, your, your um, creditor and ask if they can increase the limit, just don't use it. Um, or you can choose to minimize those or spread them to other credit cards. That way you can keep that amount lower. So just keep that in mind. That's the second biggest thing. And a lot of people don't know that. So 30% of what makes up your credit score is your revolving credit amounts owed on your credit cards or revolving credit. 15% is our length of credit. So this is um, people ask me all the time, is it good for me to close my cards? Should I keep them open? I always say it's not good to keep your credit cards open if you're not using them and you just have them open for no reason. Why? Because of fraud. Fraud is big. So if I, my first, for example, my first credit card was Macy's. Back in the days, it was called the Broadway. For those of you that are, are in their 40s, they know what I'm talking about. And that was my first credit card. So if I, um, if I close that, my credit score will be affected because it's my oldest trade line. But Kohl's is my most recent one. If I'm not using it, I'm not going to use it anymore. I would close that out because if I continue to move, I forget about it. I don't change the address and it's subject to fraud. And again, that's something that we commonly see now. And then 10% is types of credit used. So types of credit used is going to be... Um, if you have too much revolving credit, your score is going to go down because at any time, say that you have $100,000 available, even if you're not using it, at any time you could say, you know, I lost my job, I'm going to use all of my credit and then I'm going to apply for bankruptcy. 
So um, that is a types of credit that's going to affect you in a negative way, a lot of revolving debt. But the positive ones are going to be like mortgages and auto loans and personal loans, things that are not revolving. And the other 10% is going to be uh, applying inquiries. So if you're applying for a bunch of credit, if I go to Kohl's and Lowe's and Macy's and everywhere else, it's going to affect my credit. People ask me all the time, is it true that if I run my credit three times, it's five points that gets deducted for my credit score? No. So everyone's credit is like a fingerprint. Everyone's different. I can turn around and go and apply for Kohl's today and I get, could get 20 points knocked off of my credit because I applied. But Catalina can go today and apply for Lowe's, Kohl's, Macy's, and she maybe has one point taken away. Why? Because maybe her credit history is a little stronger than mine and, um, and the credit bureau is looking at it and thinking, okay, she applied for three cards. She's always been good and on time. She has plenty of credit history. Fine, no problem. They look at me applying for one and they might think, okay, uh, she shouldn't apply for anything right now because of her credit history. So we're going to deduct a lot more points. So these are the things if you want to take a quick picture, but it, we're also going to send it to you in a handout. And Aquina, are you okay with taking some questions as we go? Yes, for sure. Okay, perfect. We got a question already. Um, one of the questions from Lorelai says regarding revolving credit, ne reflecting negatively. Does that apply if you are paying off the credit card each month or paying down 70 to 80% of the balance each month? Great question. Thank you for asking. Yes, you definitely, it, it'll affect you every month. So say that I do run my credit card um, at $1,000 um, and I use all my debt, my credit, revolving credit. If when I get the bill, I pay it completely off, no, it does not affect my credit. But if I pay $300 towards that $1,000 and now there's 70 or 70%, 70 $700 left on that card, yes, it's, it's going to affect my credit in a negative way. And I hope that answered it. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So pay consistently on time. We know 35% is what makes our score. So I want to pay consistently on time every time. Keep your balances as low as possible. So if you can pay more to that credit card, um, then do so because not only the interest that we have to worry about, um, but you also have to worry about credit cards that give you a six month introductory rate or 12 months or whatever that month uh, number is. Because if you do not pay that fully and completely, say I have a credit card, we don't do this, Altura, so I'm going to use another bank, Wells Fargo. So let's say you have an account, a credit card with Wells Fargo, and they say you have six months of 0% interest. Well, what if I paid most of it off at that $1,000 and I paid $995 and the seventh month I still owe $5, I'm going to have to pay interest for that entire thousand dollars for those six months they gave for free. So just know that if you do not pay off that balance in the time they gave you of the in zero introductory rate, then you're going to pay full interest of either that 20, 15, whatever interest rate they gave you on the full balance from day one. Keep that in mind. So always keep your, your credit cards as low as possible financially because it helps us. Secondly, because it helps our score stay strong. Keep older accounts open. You don't have to keep all of them, but this is going to be your credit history. So you want to keep some open. As I mentioned, I keep Macy's. Diversify um, your types of accounts. So don't just have all credit cards on your credit. Uh, maybe auto loans are great to help you boost up that credit. Personal loans are great. If you have a mortgage, that's really helping you. So these are the things you can do. If say you have no credit established at all, or your children have no credit, they're turning 18 and they've been play, paying their cell phones, you can ask for a letter of credit. If you're renting a, an apartment or a house, you can ask your landlord for a letter of credit. All you have to do is go through the credit bureaus, let them know that I've been with Verizon for seven years. I've made my payment on time every time. Here's my letter of credit added to my credit. That will help you. Those are um, those are a boost to your credit to help you. Even if you have challenging credit and you need the most help you can get, I would definitely recommend this. Um, limit the number of applications made. And we talked about that because that affects our credit as well by 10%. Positive information can remain indefinitely. 
keep that in mind as well. And most type of negative information stays on for seven years from when first reported. Here's another myth. People tell me, oh, I have that collection and it's been on my credit for six years. So I just need one more year and it's gonna fall off. True, but not true. So a collection will stay on your credit from, for seven years from the date last reported. And collection agencies will keep reporting and re-reporting and re-reporting. And in three years, they re-report it again. So that seven, that seven year mark starts all over again. Um, keep that in mind because it never goes away. And this is why it's so important for you to negotiate to, to get that debt down or, or completely erased. You can do this yourself. Altura has products that are uh, services, that free services that I'll talk to you about at the end. But you can definitely do this yourself if you'd like. You can call and negotiate down that con collection account. So again, I'm going to use the $1,000 example. But say I have a medical collection for $1,000. I can't afford to pay $1,000. It's been on my credit forever. It's not going away. I now want to buy a house, buy a car, have, build my credit, have good credit. I call the collection agency. I'm going to offer the least amount possible. Uh, I can pay you, uh, dear collector, $100 on this $1,000. That's all I can afford. They're going to start the negotiating process with you. Once you both agree to a dollar amount that you want to pay, um, then just let them know, okay, can I have this in writing? Can you email it me, to me or send it in a letter letting me know that you've accepted $300 on this $1,000 that I owe? Make sure that you do that before you give them your credit card information to pay it off because we've had people that say, oh, no, I negotiated, I paid it off. And all it says is now you owe $700 instead of $1,000 on your credit. So make sure you get that information prior to. Um, chapter seven bankruptcy reports for 10 years and also chapter 13 reports for seven. So I get asked, what is the difference between chapter seven and chapter 13, uh, chapter uh, seven and 13? Seven is gonna be where the court completely dismisses your debt. You don't have to pay anything that's done. It stays on your credit for 10 years. Does not mean that you're gonna have bad credit for 10 years. We've had people that had collections and within a year and a half and two, they have a really high FICO score. How do you do this? Well, you wanna keep some of the debt and not include it in collections. So let's say I have Macy's and I really don't owe much. Like like 100, maybe 150. I'm filing for bankruptcy on all my other stuff. I could exclude that one, keep that one open and use it and make payments to start rebuilding my credit. Also, uh, what you can do is um, have a credit builder. So I'll cover that with Altura is one of the services that we offer to help our members rebuild their credit. Um, you can do secured credit cards, but you definitely want to re start rebuilding credit right away after your bank bankruptcy is discharged. Um, what the bankruptcy chapter 13, that stays on your credit for seven years, but that is uh, interest, uh, normally interest is forgiven. You still have to make the principal payments. Sometimes they reduce a little bit of what you owe or any fees on there, but that means you still have a payment. So keep that in mind. And then collection accounts, again, stay on your credit for seven years from the date last reported. So not just from the beginning to end seven years. Fill out dispute forms on the website. So we talked about Experian, TransUnion, Equifax. Um, check your credit report for inaccuracies, um, information, and even accurate information that's missing on the other uh, credit reports. Send any mail certified or any copies. Just make sure everything's uh, certified to make sure your information is not lost when you are disputing any information. And use... Uh, you can actually not even have to send letters anymore. You can do it online. So you can definitely go online and just dispute it there, but make sure you're very specific and clear on why you're disputing a, an item on your credit report. So keep this in mind. We get this asked all the time, or we, we're told by a lot of members, well, I'm paying a company to clean my credit right now and they're charging me $300 or, or every time they consolidate my negative debt and every month in my payment, they take out $80 for themselves. Do not do anything that you can't do yourself. And as I mentioned earlier, Altura Credit Union offers you a free service called Balance that will do this for you absolutely free. So if you're a member of Altura Credit Union, this is a completely free service. Um, 
companies may be engaging in legal activity. So we've had people that come over and say, hey, here's my new report. I just had someone clean it for me. And in reality, it's just a what if scenario and they're doing nothing that is legal or nothing that is gonna help you in the long run. Um, and then take the steps to dispute and correct or information, outdated information. We have young adults, 18, 19, that have bad credit from 10 years ago. And they say, I, I don't know what happened, or a parent took my credit, or someone stole my information when I was younger. And they think they can't dispute it or do anything about it. You definitely can. It's never too late to start cleaning up your credit. So preventing fraud is something we're definitely concerned nowadays. Luckily for us that work at a financial institution, bank robberies are not very common anymore and you don't hear people walking in with a gun and robbing a bank. The way they do it now is through cybersecurity and fraud and they sit in the comfort of their own home and they take money. So make sure you keep your items protected. Do not share your PIN number on your debit card with anybody because Credit unions and banks are insured. So if your money um, is missing, someone committed fraud on your bank account, your credit cards, you are insured, you're protected. The minute you say, I let my sister use my card or I told my sister to go to the ATM because she was going to the ATM and I gave her my PIN number, then you're not allowed to file a dispute and you will be responsible for those fraudulent transactions. Shred anything with your account number. Um, I go a little further than shredding because there's been cases where people piece together the shredded information. Remember, uh, criminals, this is their job. They're good at it. As in you do your job well, they do their job well. So um, go a step further. I shred my paper sometimes and then, and then I wet it. Or I shred my paper, keep it in a bin in the house and I use it when it's winter time for firewood and helping me light that fire. Um, some people take a marker, black, super deep black marker, and go over any pertinent information and then shred it. Uh, so just shredding is not even good enough anymore. Review your credit, like I mentioned, at least once a year and monitor your statements carefully. Uh, know that with some credit cards, you most credit cards, you can't dispute an item over 90 days. So say that I had a transaction, I didn't look at my statement, I went ahead and just sent the payment and then I realized my third month, wait a minute, what is this fee? And I call the credit card company and they say, well, you've been paying it for the past four months. Well, I didn't look at my statement. So they really can't help me at that point. So make sure you're reviewing that. Also your bank statements. Um, people, humans work as tellers and at the bank. So there's sometimes human error. One number might be transposed from when making your deposit and you didn't look at your receipt in the last four digits of your account number. So just make sure that you're keeping track of those things. If there's any fraud that you notice, make sure that you file a police report, contact the credit bureaus. I, current, I recently, I would say about a year ago had fraud. One weekend I had, I, I do have credit karma and credit sesame and it's good to have, um, it's completely free. You don't have to upload your credit card. They try to sell you your credit report. You don't have to buy it because you get it for free once a year, correct? So the nice thing about Credit Karma and Credit Sesame is that they will send you text or emails, whatever you choose, to let you know, hey, you, there was just an inquiry at Verizon. Someone tried to take a cell phone. Within a, one Saturday, I had back to back to back to back about 10 different transactions come through text letting me know that people were using my credit. I immediately froze my credit. And now it's a little bit of an inconvenience for me because anytime I wanna apply for something, I have to release it, but it's okay. Now I know that there's no one conducting fraud. They were able to open two accounts, a cell phone account and then care credit for medical. So, and they did use it, but I filed a dispute immediately and it never affected my score or my credit. Contact your creditors or the creditor that you notice that there was fraud on. Monitor your accounts carefully, make sure that you are checking them. And that's why Credit Sesame and Credit Karma is good to have because they'll send you an email or text saying there was a new account open. There's a late payment that was reported on this. So you wouldn't be surprised at when the time comes for you to make a large purchase. And then contact any other affected organizations. So the DMV, if you lose your ID, it's so easy for us to say, ah, oh, I lost my wallet, lost my ID. 
especially going to the DMV, it's never fun, I understand, but it's important because if someone commits fraud or someone gets pulled over and it's happened where people are arrested because they have warrants for tickets that they did had no idea and they were not their tickets. Um, especially that we don't update our address either. So that ticket and that mail is gonna go to the address on the ID. Social Security Administration and your financial institution for any fraud. So check system, people ask all the time, what is check system? It's the bank and credit union's credit report. So it, if you have an account and you did not use it, where you didn't use it wisely and you were negative on the account, the bank closed your account and you owe $300 for say, let's say. We report that to check system. So then when you try to go and open an account elsewhere, this report will come up and say, hey, um, Karina owes $300 to Bank of America. We can still help you open an account. A lot of banks will ask you to pay that off before they open an account for you. And some banks will not even let you open an account because you had a situation with another institution. So keep that in mind. And then the National Tenant Network um, used by landlords and report evictions. So um, this is also looked at um, and it will affect your credit if there's any reports of eviction can go on your credit. But if uh, the National Tenant Network is what, when you're wanting to rent a home or an apartment, they will pull this report up to see if you've never uh, had bad, pretty much bad credit with any other landlord. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. And depending on some jobs, they will check for credit, check system, national tenant network, all three of them. With a little awareness and effort, you can have and keep an excellent credit history. Um, and we know the higher our credit score is, the easier it is. So if I have a high score and I go and apply for an auto loan today or a personal loan or a credit card, there's going to be no income verification. There's going to be lower interest rates so I can afford a car that probably is worth and valued more and have the same payment as someone that didn't have good credit and had a a car that's on a lower end value or a used car, and we're driving around making the same payment, but my car might be better, or because if my credit's bad, my car might be a work, uh, older used car. So we definitely want to uh, keep our credit intact as much as possible. Also to rent a home, they are going to check our credit. And if our credit is low, then chances are that we might not, we might not get a home or an apartment to rent, or we also might, um, be chose overlooked because someone else with a better score is is chosen for that home. Um, most jobs also check for credit. Um, I know I, I don't deal with money. I don't even see money where I work because this is what I do. But if my they still check my credit and if my score wasn't high enough, then I wouldn't be able to work at Altura Credit Union. So keep these things in mind because it's not just for credit. It's for it's for everything. It's not just to apply for a loan, it's for pretty much everything in our lives. So I did talk about what we offer our members at no cost and, and this is the information, but I'm also gonna share some, my flyer here, if it opens up. Give me just a second here. Okay, it's not going to pull up, but I'll talk to you guys about it briefly here. So with Altura Credit Union, we give our all our members a free service called Balance. And what Balance does is if you have a collection account, high rate credit, credit fraud, we pay this company to clean up your credit for free, no cost to you consolidate, negotiate negative debt. So say I have a bunch of collection accounts, then um, they will be consolidated and I have one payment that I can afford and if they're not gonna charge me. So this is a really useful tool for all our members. If you're not a member yet, we would love to have you as a member. We provide you a free checking account where there's no minimum, no monthly service fee. It's our Ascend checking. You don't have to have direct deposit. You don't have to use, to use your debit card. You don't have to do anything. Um, we don't like a lot of banks. I would say most all banks, if you don't have direct deposit, they charge you $10. Well, if you don't have direct deposit, that means you're not working. So why would we charge you $10 when you're not working to have a bank account? We don't do that. With our savings accounts, you can have up to 19 savings accounts. 
Um, and you can name them what you want. There's no minimum balance and no monthly service fee. Why is this important? Because we believe that if you keep your accounts separate, uh, savings accounts, you won't touch them. And this is helpful for your children as well. So for example, my kids have, my younger kids, my older kids have a bank account, but my younger ones have a piggy bank. And I put a picture of Kona Ice because they always want to have a um, Kona Ice on Friday. And then I have a picture of maybe the game that they want for their PlayStation. And then the last one's the college picture. If they're putting money into these accounts, they know they can't touch it. And that picture tells them this is only for my video game, not for Kona Ice, so I can't touch it. As adults, we think the same way. So as adults, if I have a savings account, that's my shoe fund, because I have a shoe fetish, then that money is strictly for that. And I know mentally I can't touch it. Um, also, if you only have a checking account and not a savings account and all your money is going just to your checking account, you wanna make sure that you are separating that money because we'll do the same thing. I know that when I was younger and I only had a checking account, my direct deposit would go in. I would call because back then I had to call, there was no app, but I would call and check, oh, I still have $78. Okay, I'm gonna go to the mall and spend $70 and I'll be left with $8. If I separate my money, then I know that money's put away for something specific. And then lastly, we offer you our credit builder loan. And our credit builder loan, it does exactly that. It helps you rebuild your credit. If you have negative credit and you think, where do I start? We have a loan that we give you up to $3,000, no money down from your pocket. Your payments are about $85 a month. And the interest rate's about the 5 to 6% range. Very low interest rate. So it doesn't matter what your credit score looks like, we will help you with this loan. Or say that you have an 18 year old, 19 year old and says, mom, dad, can you co-sign for me because I need to establish my credit? You can tell them, absolutely not. I wanna sleep at night. I don't wanna be responsible and you, you cannot afford your payment. So you'll send them over to Altura and we'll help them with the credit builder. These are just some of the products and services that we offer you to help you and assist you in having that financial freedom that we all deserve. And we know if you're not financially healthy, then we're not mentally healthy. We're not performing well at work. We're not performing well at home. And these are big areas that we wanna concentrate on. Um, if I have a collection account and I just ignore and I don't open that letter, I don't answer that collector's phone call, does that make it easier? Yes, because I'm not having to deal with telling them that I can't pay it. But mentally, it's still affecting me. Emotionally, it's affecting me because it's causing stress. And my financial health is not where it needs to be. So let us help you make sure that you're financially healthy. If you have any questions, please feel, to, feel free to give me a call. You have my contact information and my email address. Um, any questions that you might have, you can also visit our local branches. We have one in Indio, Rancho Mirage, and Coachella, so you can walk in. And then we also have our business development officer, um, Juvenal Gonzalez, if you guys are interested or know any other groups that are interested in, in financial literacy, we can definitely help you with that. And we would be happy, Juvenal would be happy to attend any future financial workshops, let it be a church, uh, church group, a school group, or any groups that you're interested in bringing us on to. So thank you uh, for having us. I hope this information was useful. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much, Karina. We have questions for you. So hopefully you're gonna, we're gonna stay on and answer questions if that's okay. Yes, perfect. All right, perfect. Okay, so we did get a question. Um, how many credit cards are considered too many lines of credit? Is there a magic number, a recommended number? So no, again, remember I said every, every credit is like a fingerprint. So everyone's different. So if I don't have a strong history, so a long credit history, if I don't have, if I've had collections or say I had a bankruptcy, or there's things that have affected my credit in a negative way. And now I have a lot of revolving credit. Chances are that my credit is gonna be affected by it. But say that I've been, I had my credit established for 15 years and I never had really anything negative and I have $100,000 in different credit cards revolving, it's not going to affect me in a negative way. My best advice to you is to please keep an eye on your credit on a monthly basis because we're never going to do anything spontaneously and just go out and then all of a sudden we have we applied for 20 credit cards all at once we gradually get to different cards so just on a monthly basis or if you do have credit sesame or credit karma just keep an eye and see what your credit score is doing it will tell you this month your credit score went down six points and it'll tell you why or this 
time, this month, your credit score went up 15 points and it tells you why. So just keep an eye on it on a monthly basis, I would be, I would recommend. Karina, thank do you mind you. if I, I'm sorry, uh, Please, Karina. go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. I didn't you. something like that. Uh, so specifically answering the questions, the question, credit, how many credit cards is considered too much? There is an aggregate credit that is determined by the financial institutions. This is this number. We don't get to determine it. That is depending on how much credit that you've already had extended out to you, your income, and like Karina said, your credit history. So it's really hard to answer that question uh, at this level. What we would have to consider is asking uh, a credit, looking at your credit score. That's a true reflection on whether or not you have too much credit or too little credit. And you'll even start having credit uh, creditors cut down on it too, or even increase without you even wanting it. Okay, thank you. I have another question for you from Shauna. She says, I'm, uh, they shared, I'm already a member at Altura and have my auto loan with Altura. However, I only have one card, a $1,500 limit. What is a good limit to have? Thank you, Shauna, first of all, for being a member of Altura Credit Union. We thank you for your membership. Um, so there, again, there's no, every person is different. We're like a fingerprint when it comes to credit. So there's no magic number for not one person. Um, it's really looking at what's on your credit. So the only thing I can suggest though, if you do have one credit card only and it's $1,500 max limit that you don't go over that 50%. So make sure that you're running at no more than $750 per month, per month. And if you do go over, let's say that one month you did have to use a 1500, try to pay it down that very first bill. Um, so that will help your score, but make sure you're maintaining it. I know the, the, the information we're sending you, and like I said earlier, it says 65% for, for the sake of numbers. I always say 50% because it's easy. Thank you. And we do have, um, we have students on and um, we have uh, some leaders from our districts on right now. And we get this question a lot, especially for seniors. We're about to have graduation and you always get told, you have to start building your credit, right? I kept told, you know, told my daughter graduated from high school. Can you give some advice to our parents and our seniors on right now about what does that look like building your credit? Where do we start? I know you mentioned you don't want to get a credit card that you can't make the monthly payment. And I will warn parents on the call, my first day of college, I went to Cal State Long Beach and the credit card companies were lined up. And I said to them, I don't even have a job. And they said, that's okay. Here, I got approved my first day of college for $3,000 of credit cards with no job, a Discover and a, and a Visa. So, uh, you know, and I thought, oh, I have to build my credit. Well, how was I going to pay for it? Like, like, uh, Karina, like you talked about. So can you give us some advice on how to start building our credit for our 18 year olds and 19 year olds that are about to graduate? Definitely. So, and Catalina, the same problem for me happened. So um, colleges would have different credit companies there lined up signing you up for credit. That is now against the law. So just know parents, your kids are gonna be safe. That is now against the law. So even when we go out to a college, we're not allowed to speak on credit cards or have credit card information at the colleges. And it was because a lot of young adults were getting in trouble with credit. But the I would recommend the best way of helping your children build credit or young adult children, they're no longer children, right? Um, is by our credit builder loan. So it's a loan, the way it works is we give them one, two or $3,000. We give them a thousand dollars, let's say a thousand dollars, my favorite number that I use throughout my workshops, but a thousand dollars, they don't get the thousand dollars up front. We put that into a CD where they're gonna earn interest and they're gonna make money on that thousand dollars and they make the payments every month. Let's say month six, they lost their job and they can't make the payment anymore. Well, no problem, we just give them back, they would close the credit, the loan, we give them back the money they paid already into it, plus the interest they earned, and it says paid successfully in six months. So very, very useful for, for our youth. It shows respons it teaches them responsibility on savings and credit responsibility as well. So great tool. You can also choose to do a secured credit card and a secured credit card is where um, you have to put money down. So say I want a credit card for $500 then I will have to put $500 down. They'll hold my money. I can use a credit card. There's an interest charged on that. And that's how they can start rebuilding credit. 
uh, I'm, I'm sorry, building credit. Or as a parent, if you choose to, I didn't do this with my kids and I never will, is co-sign for them. So help be another stronger credit uh, person to go on to their no credit and that will help them get obtain credit and start building credit. Altera Credit Union also offers a first time auto loan a loan program. So that means if you do have an 18 year old, 19 year old has a job for uh, around at least a year, then they can apply for their own auto loan as long as they can afford it and they don't need a co-signer. So um, just keep that in mind as well. Thank you. And I'm going to encourage our um, participants, our families and students today, if you have any um, questions, please put in the chat as we get close to wrapping up. But I did get another question. If someone would like support with the balance so they can have really go over and understand their own fingerprint, their own credit report, do they reach out to you, Karina, or Hubenali, or do they go ahead and um, contact balance directly? Uh, if they already have an account with Altura Credit Union, they can definitely contact balance directly. Um, they just need to provide them with their account number. But if they do not have an account or a membership, um, and for us, a member is, you don't have to have a checking account. If you're not going to use it, we don't want you to have a product that you're not going to use. Um, you can use... Um, you can have an auto loan, you can have a mortgage that makes you a member. Um, but if you're not a member in any format or way, then you can definitely contact myself or Juvenal and we can help you become a member. And we can do everything online. So if you're intimidated right now and going into the branch or doing any of that, we can help you online. And it's fairly simple. It takes about two minutes to get you going. Thank you. And then if you want to go back to that slide so they can get that contact information. So I think some of them are members with the um, balance. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, so as, and I know you mentioned you're willing to go out. I just want to reiterate, um, you know, the team's willing to go out and provide these opportunities. As you know, we offer in Spanish, there was a Spanish option as well. Um, churches, schools, just to come out and educate our families and our um, students. So I don't know if you want to add anything like in, in terms of that of op opportunities and creative ways to get this information out. Uh, so the, the information as far as us providing the workshops, um, we can definitely, uh, we can definitely, um, Hubenal, do you, I, I don't know if you want to answer that because I know that's your territory, so I don't want to. Actually, Karina, we, we're, we're speaking to all of our, our COE. Okay. Um, so to answer the question, we've created this, this add-on to our partnership with our COE to provide financial literacy workshops. So well, I guess at this point, it would be we're contacting Catalina or myself. And at that point, we would uh, direct them to the corresponding video. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm trying to see, I know there was a, a question from a student and I want to see if you want to share. There's so many different resources <clears throat> on financial literacy and credit. And so I'm going to work with the student to give them additional information, but is there additional material or um, financial literacy course or information that they can access being less under 18? And I want to say to our student on, I'm so proud of you for being here. I just put, I just private chatted you my email address and I'll put it in the chat for everyone. We, that's why we want to give this information early. We don't want, you, I don't want, I don't want what happened to me where I had $3,000 of debt and no way of paying for it my first semester of college. And that's why Dr. Gomez believes in this and wants to give this information. But I don't know if Karina or Hubenali, um, if you have any ideas or um, some resources for us, uh, a senior in high school. She's a senior here, she's a senior and wants to get ahead of this and get more information. We do have a teens and money workshop. Um, so if we can either conduct another workshop, we can work together and do that, or we can work with her one-on-one -on -one, either in the branch or over the phone just to, uh, she can obtain more financial literacy information and we'll definitely go through that with her. We also have special accounts for our teens under 18 um, that helps them with having an account and a debit card um, as well start getting them on track to once they turn 18 to be a little more financially savvy. Thank you. And we're hoping the goal is hopefully you're receiving some of this information in your government and economics classes. I know it's not the same right now because of some of them virtual and some are in person, but that's the goal of this initiative is so more of our students get this information early. So we're, we're gonna get there. We want our students to, to feel strong and, and ready to go as they start um, after graduation and go into you know, the world. Okay, so I know I just, I'm trying to say, I don't have to see any additional questions. 
Um, I don't know if you have any, you know, final thoughts or recommendations for our participants today. And I want them to know more to come. This is just the beginning. We're going to provide more opportunities for you to come and join and get your questions answered. So as we wrap up, if you have any last minute chats, any um, sorry, last minute questions, please, you can place that in the chat for us. But um, Karina or Juvenal, any additional last minute thoughts or closing thoughts? I'll just say, I'll, I'm sure who will have some thoughts as well, but I just want to say that please, um, like I mentioned, financial health affects our everyday life and it's very, very important. So ensure that you are taking care of it. If um, right now you're not in a financial stable situation to start worrying about tackling some collections or late payments, I would say don't worry about it now, but the minute you can do it, it this should be your priority because as I mentioned earlier, it affects not only us obtaining new credit, but it affects us to uh, get a job or get a home, uh, rent a home. So just make sure that when you are able to do it, so let's start tackling it either together with Altura or on your own, but do not ignore it because it never goes away. Right, uh, Karina, thank you so much. Uh, and just like, you know, I, I'm gonna speak for both of us and I'm, a, I'm gonna include you there, Karina. Uh, it, is, it is awesome to see uh, custom, returning customers or at this point returning members asking questions, wanting to better their, their financial situation. Um, in the past I've had I think it was middle school students as customers that are now adults, you know, and, and there's, it's super awesome and enlightening to see that, that they have become responsible young adults and, and into this financial world that we live in and just feel free. And I encourage everybody to come. Don't be afraid to ask questions just in general. Don't be afraid. But whenever I get asked questions, I love to, I love to answer them. I love to, have that opportunity to shed some light, shed some new information. And I, I, I'm sure Karina feels the same way. You have her contact information, please feel free to reach out to us whenever you need help. Or even if it's just a question, there isn't such thing as a dumb question. It, it, we just don't know. And if we don't know, we will get that answer. Thank you. So with that, I want to thank you for joining us this evening. Um, you will receive an email tomorrow that has the PowerPoint, um, the recording so you can go back and make reference but like I mentioned earlier and throughout this presentation um, our county superintendent is really really wants to make sure all of our students and our families have this information that it's not you know we want to bring it to them and a way to digest and like Huvan just mentioned you know ask your questions not be intimidated um, we know some of the things we're working on on uh, mental health I think a lot of it has to do with what you just talked about Karina like all of this um, all of this, and you know, it does take some stress on families and communities and students. And so, um, definitely more to come. Please feel free. You saw my email. It's Catalina C. Fuentes, so C. C. Fuentes at RCOE. If it's about financial literacy or college applications or anything, college career readiness, that's our team. That's what we do here at RCOE, and we just look forward to continue to provide these sessions. And we want to thank our partners at Altura for um, being trailblazers and wanting to do as many of these sessions as they need to, to educate our community. So I just wanna thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you, Catalina. Right, and thank, thank everyone who attended. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. Have a great evening.